Hello everybody, HCC here. I have this to open. It is Delta 17. It is their first wave of figures. Uh, I've been looking forward to opening this. I'm really excited. Uh, for your information, I did not purchase this. They sent it to me, but I was able to preview these figures uh, at Joe Fest. I was able to see uh, the paint masters that they had at Joe Fest. And uh, so I was really excited after seeing them there. So they sent me a box. We're going to open these up. We're going to check them out. And uh, you can decide for yourself what you think of them. But um, I've been hanging on to this for a minute. Um, and it's taken a lot of willpower not to rip it open. Uh, but here it is. The camera is right there. The box is right here. Let's open this and check out these Delta 17 O-Ring action figures. Okay, knife is here. Better put on my glasses because I am blind. Ah, there we go. Uh, okay, let's uh, carefully slice this open. It's, uh, it's fragile. I'm handling with care. I am handling with care. I handle everything with care, I say, as I slice my thumb off. Uh, here we go. Cutting the tape. Um, this another reason why you should get to Joe Fest if you can is that you you get previews of stuff that's coming up. Um, so when I went by the uh, Delta 17 cable uh, at Joe Fest and saw what they had coming, I was very impressed. Especially like the the paint applications that they were going to put on these figures were just really impressive so I'm interested in seeing if the production figures uh, live up to the expectations so let's get this box open and there's a, a cardboard cover on top and we have carded action figures so let's pull these out I'll try to show them to the camera and to myself oh that looks good Oh yeah, okay. Uh, and I will open these. Um, I'll uh, move the camera and put the backdrop uh, behind these so that I can open them uh, and you can see them. But this one is Shepard, Delta 17 liter. I, by, by coincidence, I pulled the liter out first. Uh, this one is oh, a, a, another Shepard, Delta 17 liter. X. You know what, you, can, you, can, you can't have too many liters. So we've got two liters here. Um, and we've got Rooster, Delta 17, uh, comms slash recon. For those of you who are not familiar, um, there has been a wave of third-party, uh, O-ring action figures lately. Um, so like Strike Force Alpha, Call Sign Longbow, Operation Recall, these guys. Um, so if you like... O-ring style action figures like the old vintage G.I. Joes. Um, there are figures that are being made uh, right now by these, uh, these independent companies that are applying modern technology uh, to action figures to do things that we could not have done. They, they, we couldn't have got these in the 80s and 90s. It's just exceptional work. So it looks like, looks like there are two of each figure in this. What this means is that I should be able to keep one sealed and open the other uh, to show you. This is uh, Kestrel, uh, Delta 17 Grenadier. Uh, they are in blisters on a sealed card. I promise I will get better lighting for you guys as soon as I pull them all out. Leonidas Delta 17 2IC. Uh, so that's cool. Um, that's cool. All right, so let's just keep going. Let's keep going. I want to get these out because I want to, well, I want to see them. Ah, and I want to open them and I want to show them to you. So this is uh, Delta Squad. Um, oh, Delta 17 Infantry. They have a General Infantry Trooper. Um, and, oh, that's the same guy. Um, this one, this, um, this is the second uh, Leonidas figure. And this is the one that um, most impressed me as far as the paint applications go. What have we got here? Oh, we've got more infantry. Hey, so we can army build. 
Uh, I'm already army building and I've just opened the box. I've got one, two, three, and four infantry troopers. So I'm now on the second layer in this box and this is Preacher, Delta 17 Marksman. Oh, that looks really good. That is, that is gorgeous. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't uh, stall on each one. I can't stop on each one because I want to get these actually open and in front of the camera. Um, oh, we have um, a bad guy, Thunder Battalion, enemy infantry. So you have a foil for the Delta 17 infantry and um, it's a, packed nicely with tissue paper. So there's not, the cards don't scuff. Uh, while they're in there. Uh, there's another uh, enemy infantry. Ah, Jaguar, enemy assassin. Check out that guy. Enemy assassin. That's a wicked looking dude. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I know that um, there are a lot of collectors, there's enemy assassin again, uh, that only collect O-Ring. Uh, and for a while, it looked like O-Ring was kind of dead. In fact, it looked like maybe the, um, the 118th scale in general was in decline uh, in favor of 6-inch figures. Well, 118th scale is not dead yet, uh, nor is O-Ring. This is uh, Death Sparrow Retrograd Leader. Shadow Dragon Enemy Leader, and that's... he looks like an enemy leader. Uh, let me get through these. I, I I hate to rush through pulling these out of the box, but I want to I want to open them up. Um, enemy robot ninjas. So how about some robot ninjas? Uh, that's uh, that's a wicked design. All right. I'm, I'm, again, I'm I'm gonna open these up. I will take a closer look at them. I'm just wanting they're really beautiful, and I want to stare at them. Just robot ninjas. I think the rest of these in here might be duplicates of. Ones that I've already pulled out. Yeah, there's uh, Death Sparrow. And, um, oh, there, there we go. I knew there was another one there. And then another enemy leader. So there we go. Uh, we have, here are, here are the, here are the figures. Uh, now I will uh, open these and let's take a closer look at them. Because these figures uh, have more detail and more paint applications than we could get on the average figure in the 80s. So let's, you know, let's see if they live up to our expectations, which are high. We have high expectations with these. Just a reminder, again, I didn't buy these. Uh, they sent them to me. Uh, please keep that in mind while you're judging these. Uh, always use your own judgment, judge for yourself, but uh, I am going to open these and um, and show you what they look like. Let's start at the top. Let's start with Shepard, the Delta 17 leader. Uh, and let's look at the card. Beautiful artwork, nice Delta 17 logo. And uh, this, this uh, Delta 17 patch is just cool. It's just a cool design. Back of the card uh, has the... Uh, the lineup of figures, the good guys, the bad guys, uh, and of course a file card. Not exactly like a G.I. Joe style file card, but it has the character bio, his background, uh, age 43, James Washburn, birthplace Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, probably an Eagles fan. The uh, website, very important, Delta 17 Toys is printed on there. This is not a Kickstarter. A lot of the other uh, O-ring figure lines were Kickstarters. This one is not. This is a line of figures that you will be able to purchase. They're, they're going to be ready to go, and they may even be on sale by the time you see this video. Uh, the card is a uh, very solid, thick card. Um, it's not gonna bend too easily. It's not a Walmart card. Let's cut the blister off as we do, uh, carefully. Leave the card as intact as possible. Uh, it is really nice that that case came with at least two of each figure because these do look really nice on the card and I would like to keep one on the card and have one each uh, out for for display. So oh, there we go. All right, I, I didn't cut it effectively enough. My my knife is not as sharp as it should be. I, I sharpened it not that long ago, but then I used it a lot, so I need to resharpen it. Uh, so there's the card. There's the card back. Um, let, let me get a better angle. 
There's the card back without the figure. I'll set that up here. And now we have the figure in the blister. Let's uh, pull the top bubble off. And we have the figure. Oh, look at this. We have a divider. Uh, it helps keep the figure in place. Nice vacuum formed divider. And we have the figure itself. And uh, before we take a look at the accessories, let's just pull this guy out. And uh, yeah, that's um, that is so cool. I mean, look look at the the sculpting on this. I hope it's coming off on camera, but it's very sharp. Um, and there there are, there are a lot of details, but there are also a lot of paint applications. Like look at the the shotgun shells that are painted. Uh, two paint applications on those. Uh, we've got patches of red. Uh, we've got a bandana. We've got patches of black. Um, just beautiful. Just beautiful so far. Next, we have the accessories, and uh, they are also in this tray. We have um, an assault rifle. We've got, uh, got some night vision goggles. I'll get some close-ups of those. Uh, we have what looks like a backpack. It is a backpack with a hook for storing. Uh, a secondary weapon, which has got to be the shotgun, right? This has got to be the shotgun for those shells on the leg. Uh, and let's see, what is this? This is a helmet, and the helmet does have a notch there for uh, for the night vision goggles. Uh, and then lastly, there is a figure stand. This is something that I, I really think modern figures should come with. This was an oversight for G.I. Joe in the 80s to not include figure stands. Uh, in the 90s, G.I. Joe had figure stands, but not in the 80s. And this is not only a nice looking figure stand, it has uh, Delta 17, the Delta 17 logo uh, embossed on the figure stand. That looks really sharp. Let's, uh, let's play around with these accessories. First, let's put the figure on the stand. That fits really nicely. One thing I like, though, this figure stands great without the stand. That is really solid. In fact, the entire figure feels real. Oh, look at this. Feels really solid. Um, nice tight joints, but look at this. Wrist articulation. Lovely ball jointed neck. You know, it's got the standard G.I. Joe articulation plus some additional articulation points. So um, it, it feels good quality. It, it feels really well made. It does not feel like cheap plastic. Um, it's loose enough to be mobile. The joints are tight but not frozen like you get with some modern action figures. Uh, so very nice. But let's put them on his stand and let's... Uh, play with these accessories. Okay, let's see how these accessories fit together. He has a helmet, which is designed to fit around these earpieces. He's got, looks like, uh, some earphones molded onto the head, and then the helmet goes on top of that. And our night vision goggles should fit. Looks like you can put them this way. If you would like them to be over his eyes, so now he's using his night vision goggles. But if you want them to be up and out of the way, you just flip them over. And these goggles are in kind of a soft plastic, which I prefer because they're less likely to break. And this is one where you have to put some pressure on it to push it into the notch in the helmet. If that were hard plastic, that would just snap. Uh, so they wisely made it out of a softer plastic. Well done. Uh, and then you have the backpack. And it looks like the backpack goes this way. There we go. And um, the, the shotgun, the card, the back of the card says, um, stowable shotgun clips onto backpack. So this should clip onto here in some way. I think uh, this way, that fits. Okay, that fits. You know, it works when you do it right. Um, so the shotgun can go on the backpack uh, and that leaves his submachine gun. Now, you know it's one of my pet peeves uh, to have an action figure that cannot hold all of his accessories. 
Uh, this one can. And look at the look at the detail on this. Look at the detail. It's really nicely done. This looks and feels like a premium uh, action figure. Um, this is not uh, not not your cheapo knockoff retail store action figure. This looks like. I mean, it looks like one of the higher end um, uh, figures that you might get uh, through one of the Kickstarters. Uh, it's got the colors that I like to see. It's got little pops of red and the mask and the shotgun shells. But we've got mostly really good subdued military colors. And it's got a, a base black uniform. Starting with black is always a good call. This is a good start. So let's... Uh, Let's set Shepard aside and look at the next one. Next, let's look at Leonidas. And this is the figure that most caught my eye at Joe Fest, uh, mostly because of the tattoos. I want to show those to you. I'm seeing them here through the plastic, and they do look as good as I remember them uh, in the samples at Joe Fest. And this guy has an animal companion, another solid card, really, really solid, the really thick uh, cardboard. That doesn't bend very easily, so... You know, these cards are not going to damage very easily, but you've got your card back, some, some lovely artwork, and the uh, character bio on this file card. Uh, he's age 36. He is Leonard Johnston, um, and he's from Manitoba. He's Canadian. So could this figure be the base figure for a Rouse Dower Custom? Maybe, maybe. Consider that. Customizers, consider. Does it? Does he look like Rousedower? I, th I think he may look a little like Rousedower. Anyway, let's open this guy and uh, check him out. Um, this one, uh, I can already tell just looking through the plastic that it looks as good as I remember it uh, at Joe Fett's. So I hope, I hope you like it. Uh, I hope I like it. Uh, so there, there's also... One nice touch related to the animal companion uh, that uh, that you don't get with most action figures. So this is gonna be it's gonna be cool. There we go. The blister is cut off, so I can remove that and the divider, which okay, is holding the figure and accessories in place. Uh, so let's carefully take out the figure and. Uh, Another really solid figure. I mean, it, it it looks solid. It feels solid. He's got his hang loose T-shirt there. Uh, outfitted more for an urban situation rather than, you know, jungle camouflage. He's got the blue there, but he's got the backward cap and he's got the headphones, the microphone sculpted on, uh, a wicked beard. Uh, this is not just a, like a painted on beard like you would get with... 82 uh, rock and roll or something that is a um, th that's a, a substantial beard that's an impressive beard but take a look at these tattoos this is what i thought was so cool at uh at joe fest is these tattoos they go over the elbow joint which i don't, I don't think gi joe ever did that um, the elbow joints were never painted on but you've got tattoos that go all the way down the arms Really nice, intricate detail on those tattoos. Um, and also on the leg, we have wrist articulation, uh, something that G.I. Joe figures didn't have. And let's feel those joints. The, the joints, the tolerance on these joints are about l the way that I would like them. Tight joints are good. You, you want your joints to be tight, right? But you don't want your joints to be so tight that, um, that you feel like you're going to break them by bending the legs or uh, bending the arms. Um, there is, uh, looks like a tiny bent of uh, paint overspray there. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind if that is important to you um, along the, the legs there. Um, it looks like the lower legs are in flesh-colored plastic and they have a flesh-colored paint on the upper legs at the knees. Uh, it, it's, I'm glad they didn't just leave the knees the the wrong color some gi joe figures uh in the well especially in the 90s did that and that's a, a bit off-putting but they didn't do that uh one consequence though is that um the paint has got to be really sharp there 
around uh, around the legs on the shorts. This is another figure that stands really well without the figure stand, but we'll go ahead and put him on his stand. Like so, the, uh, the holes on the feet are much like G.I. Joe action figures, if we can get the camera to focus, there we go. Uh, the holes on the feet are much like G.I. Joe action figures, uh, so he can stand up, very nice. And then we have the backpack uh, and uh, this uh, assault rifle, and those go let's see in a hand and these hands are are, sl are soft uh they're slightly softer plastic so they will flex uh, so you're not likely to break the thumb on these guys i think on most action figures either the hands need to be soft or the accessories do so you don't end up breaking them uh, i think uh, classified went with softer accessories and that unfortunately led to some deformed accessories um, but uh, these softer hands are going to grip the weapons very well, not drop them, and you won't break the thumbs. So there's your backpack. Um, and there is Leonidas. Now, on the card, is there a name for the dog? It says um, puppy attaches to backpack and dog bull attaches to backpack. I guess the dog, I guess the dog doesn't have a name. So uh, we're going to give him a name right now. Uh, the dog that rides on a backpack, right? It's a, it's a backpack dog, so the dog's name is Yoda. I'm sure there won't be any trouble uh, trademarking that name. I want to look at a bad guy next, so let's look at the top bad guy, Shadow Dragon, the enemy leader, and we have some more artwork, Delta 17 logo, we have the blister uh, on the back. Now we have uh, artwork of the enemy, uh, and we have a bio like the other guys. But most of his information is unknown. Of course, the bad guy's information is unknown. Let's open this up. He looks really cool. Uh, looks like he has some, uh, some different uh, elements, some different design choices uh, from the Delta 17 guys that we've seen so far. So this is uh, the enemy leader, the Shadow Dragon. And uh, we're going to carefully remove him without damaging the figure or the card. Uh, there we go. So there is the card back. Um, and without the blister, uh, I should show these. Without the blister, you've got this full character art, and that looks lo looks great. Um, we've got some line art here that's very sharp. This is very, very sharp artwork, and I think it's fantastic. But let's look at... The figure in i can already tell we have some soft goods we have a soft goods cape how about that uh, let's uh, take him out of his plastic coffin and uh, take a look at the figure and here is there we go shadow dragon oh i lost one of the accessories the sword there we go shadow dragon and there he is um that is that that's something he's got these uh protruding you know spike things on his helmet he's got he's it, it's like angry eyebrows and uh it's got a notch on the back and he's got a soft goods cape this is i mean he looks like a bad guy doesn't he i mean he looks like a bad guy um but we've got like samurai armor on the legs and the arms um, I mentioned in my review of the HasLab His Tank that, you know, black and red may be my favorite color combination. Not necessarily my favorite colors standing alone, but a com as a combination, black and red just looks great. It's, it's hard to go wrong with black and red. And the gray, we've got two tones of gray. We've got a light gray on the mask, and we've got a dark gray on the rest of the uniform. Uh, that is quite impressive. So let's, uh, you know what? Look at that. Even though this gauntlet goes over the back of the hand, they still have wrist articulation on that. That's amazing. Um, let's look at these accessories. I wasn't sure if he stood up as well because I kind of tossed him back there and he fell over. But uh, does he stand? Yeah, he does. He does stand pretty well. Um, but this guy is also going to come with a figure stand. Uh, let's uh, take the other accessories out. We have, looks like, two swords. Two swords. Two black samurai swords. 
uh, unpainted but with a, a decent amount of detail and we have uh, this funky looking submachine gun um, it looks like the magazine and the grip and it's got this little foregrip here uh, and uh, yeah it looks uh, looks nicely done looks nicely done and then we have the figure stand not as many accessories with this one but I assume that's because uh, he has the soft goods cape uh, this uh, this figure stand has the Delta 17 logo on it. It doesn't have like the Shadow Dragon enemy logo on it. It still has Delta 17, which is fine. That is the name of the overall toy line, so that makes sense. Um, I've noticed that it, it, it has still the same articulation, still really good, still really solid, uh, solid joints, and all of that the head is just a little bit loose not very loose but it's slightly more loose than the other joints um not uh not a big problem it's not really a problem at all it's just something that i noticed um so the head is just very slightly more loose let's give him his swords looks like he's got some loops here in the back for the swords and yes, uh, they fit in like so. Do they press in any further than that? It looks like that's it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the, the swords are a little bit loose when they go in the, in the loops on the back. Uh, but there we have two swords and then the submachine gun, which, uh, yes, fits nicely. Yeah, I, I really like... I, I have to um, give them credit for manufacturing some really good hands for these figures. And I think we're going to see uh, hands like this on uh, other modern O-ring figures because this is just the way to do it. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and put sword in other hand. One thing that's important to me is that a figure be able to hold all of the accessories. Nothing gets left behind. Nothing gets uh, left in the box to be lost or broken. There is Shadow Dragon, the enemy leader. Uh, I think he looks great. I think the soft goods cape is a nice touch. Um, I think the accessories are fine. The swords are a little loose. Uh, unless I'm doing it wrong, it's possible I might not be doing it correctly, but at least as I'm putting them in here, the swords are a little loose in these loops. Um, they'll stay in. That's not a problem. Just be aware of that. Uh, joints are all really good. Uh, the uh, head is just a little more loose than the other joints, um, but the design is uh, very nicely done. Uh, a great choice of colors. I mean, he looks like an, an enemy leader, right? He looks like a bad guy. I mean, you, you look at this guy and you're like, no, he can't be a good guy. He has to be uh, a bad guy and he you know he definitely has that uh, has that feel to him so uh, there's the enemy leader next I want to look at one of the women action figures because I'm very curious about how these are constructed if they are as solid as the other figures and if they're at least on par with the G.I. Joe action figures that we are familiar with so this is Kestrel the Delta 17 Grenadier we have another solid card back uh, some artwork here she is from Poland and she's one of the good guys. This column has the good guys. This column has two factions of bad guys. Uh, so let's see what this figure looks like out of the package. All right, here we go again. Let's get this thing removed. Break the seal and cut this away. Um, I do try to always cut the, uh, cut the uh, blisters off this way. Um, with, with a few exceptions, but um, I like to do it this way because it gives us the cleanest look at at the card. This gives the best look at the card without messing up the artwork on the card, so that still looks nice. Let's uh, take a look at the figure. Um, I do like how these are packaged with the basically three plastic blisters that keep the figure and the accessories together. Good for display, so you can see everything and they don't rattle around in there. Uh, but there is the figure. And um, there we go. Yeah. Uh, looks good so far. Let's see uh, how are our joints and our articulation. Feels good so far. Solid joints, tight but not frozen. Um, got the wrist articulation. 
So she has the same articulation that the male action figures have. That's good. Um, didn't skimp on the articulation on the women figures. And, uh, yeah, uh, solid details. Some of the same kind of, like, chest um, flak jacket details that we saw on the Shepard figure. Um, good military colors. I like these colors. As you're probably aware, I prefer the more realistic G.I. Joe action figures, and so far these are kind of right down that line. These, these are really very much in my wheelhouse. A nice gray uh, beret with a black beret f a flash, and uh, I mean the, the eye paint, the, the details on the eyes are really good. Uh, it's solid. It's solid. Looks like she's got a, kind of a smirk a slightly expressive face as as it looks on the card so she ha kind of has the same expression she has on the card back i like that that's cool it's an expressive face but it's not overly expressive so now let's look at the accessories so far all of these figures stand up really well really solidly without figure stands this wasn't a priority for me before but maybe it should be a priority i really like that uh, it has a figure stand like the others but you don't absolutely need it. It stands up very well. But let's look at the accessories. We have uh, we have a knife, black knife, small black knife, and we have uh, an assault weapon. Good looking assault weapon there. There we go. What's a grenade launcher? So yeah, she, the grenadier has a grenade launcher. It looks really good. These are really uh, well sculpted. Lots of small detail on these. Uh, it's great. It's great. I've got no complaints about the accessories. And a backpack looks like it's got a little antenna on it. Oh, it's not an antenna on the backpack. It's got, there's a radio attached to the backpack, like a strapped to the side of the backpack with an antenna on it. So that's nice. And there are clips on the side. And that should be for the knife. They are hitting all of the things that are important to me as far as accessories. The figures can hold all of their accessories. And that, it's, it's something that is important to me. It was important to me as a kid when playing with G.I. Joes. I didn't like uh, figures where you just have to leave an accessory behind. Um, just toss it in a box or something. So then never see it again. Uh, so having figures that can hold all the accessories is a plus. I've also noticed that the grips on the weapons look like they're about the uniform. They're about the same size and shape. Uh, I'm not sure if all of them are, but they seem to have been so far. Um, so that makes it uh, pretty standard. They, they should all fit in the hands very well, and they should also be interchangeable, which is nice. So we've got the uh, the softer plastic hands that can flex a little bit. You probably, I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but they can flex a little bit, so you're not likely to break the thumbs on those. And, uh, and there we go. We have another uh, Delta 17 figure. Oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot the figure stand, although, again, she doesn't necessarily need it. Uh, but uh, there we go. Let's put her on her stand. And take a look at this figure all together. Kestrel, the Delta 17 Grenadier, all geared up and uh, and looking great. I don't have any complaints on this figure. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of accessories, but uh, it has, I think, the right number of accessories. Uh, nothing extra, nothing that doesn't fit. Uh, so I'm fine with that. I don't need... Uh, a lot of accessories. It's not about the number. It's about the quality, and it's about whether it fits with the figure, and these accessories do. I wanted to do this one next just because it looks cool. This is Preacher, the Delta 17 Marksman. Uh, Good-looking artwork, good-looking card. He's from Chicago, probably a Bears fan. Let's open it up. Same process, just trying to cut through just the one, just the one layer of plastic with this uh, unfortunately dull knife. All right, there we go. And I did not get this one as cleanly as the others. I did scratch the artwork. Uh, it's a good thing there's an extra one. I'm glad to have uh, one that I can keep sealed because I kind of goofed that one up. But here we go. Uh, let's um, remove 
the figure. Check out the the card. Good artwork. Very nice artwork on the back. A good write-up on Preacher, who is 27 years old. And let's look at the figure itself. Taking one plastic cover off and two plastic cover off. And here is a figure. And this is the first one we have with a camouflage pattern. So we do have some camouflage on this guy. Uh, looks like kind of a digital camouflage kind of look. Uh, similar to some of the camouflage that we got on some later vintage G.I. Joe figures. This one combines an element that I liked on the Shepard figure, which was the black uniform, with camouflage. That's uh, uh, really nicely done. Uh, it's got a sidearm there. Uh, the details on here, I mean, even without the accessories on, this guy looks geared up. He's got pouches everywhere. He's got uh, uh, extra weapons. Uh, he's got uh, his bandolier here. Um, and some shoulder pads, and it, it just looks really, really good. Um, good looking figure, good articulation. See this one, this like solid uh, at the head, solid at all of the joints. This one, um, I know we had the earlier one with a slightly loose head. Uh, hasn't been a problem on any of the other figures. All of these other figures have had really good solid joints. Now, do we have the, yeah, we have the wrist articulation good and tight at the wrist there. All right, stand up, sir. Uh, yeah, <laughs> stands really solidly. I like that. You know what? Now, now this is going to be a standard that I hold other figures to. I like it when they can stand solidly like that without their figure stands. So he's a marksman. And he comes with this huge sniper rifle. Uh, looks like looks like a high caliber sniper rifle. I mean, look at that. Uh, that is um, that is impressive and is not quite the same height as the figure, but it's 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 quite long, quite a long rifle. Uh, he also has uh, yes a bipod for that. I'm gonna put this on right now because I really don't want that to fall off the table and disappear forever so uh, you know how these uh, these bipods can be it, it it is articulated it will swivel but um just like with the gi joe uh, bipods they're very tiny and if they drop off you may you may lose them forever so um, there's that that looks great he also has uh, a submachine gun so he's got an assault weapon in addition to his um, his sniper rifle looks really good and a backpack a backpack with hooks on each side so I, I guess that means he can hold both of the firearms on the backpack uh, we will we will test that out and and the figure stand let's put him on the figure stand even though he doesn't necessarily need it but uh, he will still look good with it. The grips on these weapons do appear to be, if, if they're not exactly the, the same shape, they're at least the same size, and I really like that. That's uh, an, excellent, uh, an excellent choice to make sure that all of these guys can hold all of these weapons so he can hold that one, and just as easily he can hold, ah, there we go, that one, also really solidly, and he should be able to hold any of the other accessories that come with any of the other figures as well. But uh, he's got this backpack, and I want to see if the weapons will fit on here. So um, the other one, it, it looked like it went this way, like this. There we go, there we go. I figured it out. I figured it out, yay me. The other one appears to fit this way. The uh, magazine for the sniper rifle appears to fit in that top slot, so that should be a way for him to hold both of his weapons on the backpack. Uh, this is great. Uh, they're, they're hitting the things that are important to me with the accessories, and I'm really happy about that. And it's nice to see camouflage. So this is how they're handling camouflage with this line, uh, and it looks pretty good. Um, it's, uh, it's action figure-like, 
right? So it's got a pattern that is kind of what you expect with an action figure. You know, real world camouflage, it would be a lot tighter. But if it were like that at this scale, it would, it, it would look uh, like a blob. So the pattern is kind of enhanced a little bit to make it look right as an action figure, on an action figure, uh, and I think that looks really good. And um, yeah, another excellent figure. Let's look at another one. We're looking at infantry next because I want to look at infantry. We're looking at infantry. So here is the Delta Squad, Delta 17 Infantry. And as you can see on the card, there's more than one guy. Uh, so these are army builders. Uh, looks like most of their face is covered, so you can army build these guys. You don't have to worry about some guys having a mustache and other guy having big ears or something like that. They they look indistinct. We have a write-up on the back, but no place of birth. You know, this is a, a troop builder, so I wouldn't uh, have a, a single birthplace. This is multiple guys here. Oh, wait, I just noticed we have a variant. So we have a Caucasian infantry trooper and an African-American infantry trooper. We have uh, two skin tones here. So, yeah, we got to open both of them. Uh, let's start with this one since I had it out first, and we'll do the other one that is good that they have a, a bit of diversity in their infantry ranks uh, so that's nice you have army builders but there is enough individuality that you know that it actually would look like an army of troopers on the shelf you know kind of as they would in real life uh, but again you know still having the helmet on so uh, you don't have a lot of facial features showing. Um, so you can get as many of these guys as you want and uh, have a whole whole army of them. So let's uh, pull this guy off. Nice card back here. Let's open the figure and take him out, packaged as the others are. The, this one, oh, okay, look at this. This one's taped. That's very interesting. Easy enough. Easy enough, let's just, uh, there we go, all right. Uh, interesting that this one is taped and the other ones aren't. Well, it's taped at the bottom too, so that's that's a bit different. That's a bit different, uh, but the figure itself. So this looks like an army builder, doesn't it? Uh, he's got a cool helmet. He's got a nice uh, military looking uniform, olive drab green with black and dark gray uh, accessories on top of it, um, a flak jacket and look, a, a gray undershirt and then black on the neck. And um, you've got some, looks like gray knee pads, black boots. Uh, they, they could easily have gone with just green and black, right? But they didn't. They added some subtle contrast uh, and I think that helps a lot. These small details matter, especially when you're looking at these guys up close. So let's uh, stand him up quite solidly and take a look at the accessories. And we have, oh yeah, looks like a, a law rocket, a uh, little anti-tank missile system there. And, oh look at this, two, two missiles that go with it. Which I assume, I assume those will fit in the barrel. The barrel is hollowed out. So, uh, yeah, hey, it actually wedges in. Check that out. It wedges in so it doesn't fall out too easily. In addition, we have, uh, this fell out. Uh, we have, um, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, that's a, there's another one. So we got three of these. We got three of these tiny anti-tank missiles. And looks like a... Looks like a K-bar there, and uh, a gas mask. Looks like a clip-on gas mask. That's cool. And the backpack, and that's all. We got. Oh, not the, that's not all. What are we talking about? We got the figure stand. Maybe the most important accessory is the figure stand. Uh, I really like these. They're not just standard GI Joe-style figure stands. They are. Um, uh, they've got the logo, obviously, but they're also a different size. They're a little bit narrower. There is the figure on his stand, looking good. And now let's see how this works, because yeah, we have um, we have a backpack. This backpack has a peg and a slot. Oh, it's got some more pegs. So I th I think I see how this goes. So these these tiny 
uh, little missiles for the launcher peg on with dumbbell shaped pegs much like gi joe missiles but really really tiny so those should wedge on there uh, one there uh one there they are they are quite tiny so uh you have to line them up really good and press them on but once they're on yeah once they're on they they're really solid very nice very nice uh, and the knife should go in this slot on the side. So far, so good. And then there is a slot on the side of the launcher. So you should be able to peg the launcher on. Which way does it go? I'm guessing this way. Uh, so let's go ahead and put the backpack on the guy. And uh, just see how it looks. Looking good. Looking good. But that's not all. But that's not all. He has a... Uh, submachine gun, same kind of grip as the other figures did. So there you go. Uh, good solid, solid joints on these. Uh, nice uh, tight joints, but also they they move really smoothly. So you can get those in any position, and it will hold any position. Very nice. Um, and then the gas mask, and it looks like on the helmet there are these tabs toward the back of the helmet. And that should fit the gas mask. So uh, let's see, which way does it go? Looks like it goes that way. So we want to put the gas mask on. Uh, we should be able to fit it over the helmet. And that should grab uh, those, those uh, slots in the back. And there almost are, but I'm just barely missing hold on i was able to get the gas mask on with some effort um but i had to take the backpack off to do it i'm not a fan of this this may be the first accessory that i i don't really like um i i can see how it's supposed to work uh but it does not work that well these backpacks have cavities and looks like this cavity is made for the gas mask so that is perfect that i think is where i'm going to keep it that is the best place for it because i think i think the figure looks good even better without it so let's uh, let's just keep him that way it's a solid infantry trooper uh, i like it i think he's very geared up uh, he's not simple and plain like uh, you might expect an army builder to be which is good i mean these guys are still soldiers right they still need their equipment they still need to be ready for battle. Just because they're not a named character uh, is not a reason for them to, uh, to not have the gear that they need uh, to go into combat. So um, I, I think this is a good choice. They look like standard infantry, infantry troopers uh, without looking too plain. Next, let's look at his buddy. He needs a buddy. He's a, an infantry trooper. He can't go alone he's got to have some backup let's open the infantry variant um this is really cool so you have you can double army build this right you can get uh both they seem to be packed in equal numbers there we go he is free from his plastic tomb his plastic coffin so let's take this guy out looks like the same card back as the other yeah they the card backs card backs are the same they appear to be at least at first glance uh, but the figures are mostly the same uh, and this one also has uh tape on the inner divider so let's uh Let's make it easier on ourselves and cut that, and there we go. There we go. And there we go. Uh, so we have uh, a different skin tone, a different skin color, but otherwise the same details, and the details are great. So uh, this, you know, standing next to his buddy, uh, this is going to look like... Uh, uh, an actual army it's going to look like an actual squad here so let's uh, let's carefully remove these we know that these uh, little missiles yeah these missiles like to roll so uh, let's let's put this guy together i'm just going to quickly put this guy together so we can stand him next to his buddy and see how they look there they are standing next to each other and uh, I i'm really impressed by this this is the basic army builder and if your basic army builder looks this good 
you you're doing pretty good they've got accessories that fit really well they've got a lot of accessories this is one case where a lot of accessories works great and they are quality accessories and they can hold all of their accessories uh, this is this is everything that i could want out of an army builder i know that you know they they sent me some they gave me some but i may purchase more for myself uh, because I just think these, a sh imagine what a shelf full of these would look like. That would look fantastic. Let's follow up by looking at the bad guy infantry. This is the Thunder Battalion enemy infantry. So we have another army builder, but this time on the bad guy's side. So uh, we've got a card back. Now, now we have age various, real name various, birthplace various. So that makes sense. And uh, let's open the Thunder Battalion. I want no comments on my knife. Actually, hey, this one, this one's like coming right up. Okay, okay. Uh, so this one, the blister wants to just come off. So why don't I just let it? Um, this will save me dulling my knife some more. So that's interesting. The, uh, the seal around this one was not quite as solid as the others, but we have... This nice card back here, it does, uh, it did scuff up the uh, artwork a little bit, but I can live with that because this is what I'm after. Um, the action figure, uh, no tape on this one, I guess not anyway. No, I take that back. There is a little bit of tape here um, and probably on the bottom, yeah, on the bottom as well. But I think if we just take it off of the top one, we should be able to, uh, able to open it up, so... There we go. Action figure inside. And this is our enemy troop builder. The Thunder Battalion. And one thing um, I have been warned about is that the belt is backward. The belt should, should go around the other way. Can I turn it around the other way without taking it off? No, I can't. So it's supposed to go around this way with the buckle in the front. Uh, like so, and that leaves these pouches in the back. Um, I'm not sure which way I like it uh, better. I, it, the pouches in the front, I mean, I know it's not supposed to go that way, but it might look fine that way anyway. I'll leave it this way because that's the way it's supposed to go, uh, but we have a color scheme of black and gray. Uh, he's got kind of a, a ski mask on, so you can see some of his facial features behind the mask. Uh, he's got some spots of red. It looks like if I take this off, yeah, he has a, a red belt buckle. Uh, he looks good without the belt, really. Um, uh, the belt is a bonus, but I think he looks fine without it. Uh, gray knee pads, black boots. Uh, starting out with black. Uh, oh, look at that! Look at that! Uh, that tampo. Check check that out. That's uh, that's really really cool. So nice um, nice details, nice colors, and. Uh, let's go ahead and put this belt back on so he can uh, be presented as he's intended to. Uh, let's try to not do it upside down, though. That would be that would be ridiculous. Let's do it the right way. There we go. Uh, there is our basic enemy uh, army builder, our enemy trooper. And we're going to stand him over here so we can look at the accessories. Uh, we've got a submachine gun. Really good looking. Looks like it might be, uh, actually, it looks like it might be an assault rifle, uh, an AK variant. Uh, very Cold War-like, giving the enemy a uh, variation of uh, AK-47. Uh, we've got a backpack with paint. Paint on the backpack. We have a gray uh, coiled line here on a black backpack. Um, these hollow backpacks kind of make sense now because you may be able to store things inside there. There is a helmet. We've got a helmet. In addition to the helmet, we have some face masks. Uh, so let's pull these out. We have this one, which has uh, an eye slot. It's got a slot for the eyes uh, to, uh, to see through. And then this one, which has uh, a red lens. So I guess you can have both. You can have, um, you could say like, this is the one with the, the you could say this is the one with the red lens down and this is the one with the, 
red lens up, and those should attach. Those should attach to the helmet as well. Let's try that out. Uh, let's see. Looks like it attaches to the helmet like that. The the uh, the face mask is in a softer plastic, which is good. I do like when they when they have a piece that you will need to manipulate, bend press on something making that out of a softer plastic means that's not going to break no i'm not forgetting the figure stand the figure stand is vital uh it's not really vital these guys can stand up great just like the others man look at this solid uh but the figure stand is a bonus and it looks good so we want the figure stands there we go and let's see how he looks with uh with the helmet on yeah oh yeah that uh, that goes very very firmly on the head uh it's not squeezing the head it's a good tolerance right it's it's uh it fits on securely it's not going to fall off but it's not so tight that you can't take it off you can take it off without any problem you can fit it on without any problem and i also like that the paint application is uh, on the face and not the head which means that helmet is not going to scrape off any paint as you take it off or put it back on. So uh, just nice, uh, nice bit of engineering there uh, that did pop off, but I'll, I'll put it back on. He, this one, I think he really, he, he needs the face mask. He looks a bit like dark helmet uh, without it. So let's, uh, there we go. And let's go ahead and pop on the other one just to see how that looks. So this one. Uh, you'll still be able to see the paint applications on the eyes. His eyes can see. Let's see if I can get some light in there. Uh, yeah, the, I can see it here, but it's hard for me to get the light in there so you can see it on camera. But you can still see his eyes through that viewing port on the helmet. So there's that. And we have backpack, which looks like it goes this way. Back, these backpacks fit on very well, too. That's very solid. That is not going to fall off. Um, now this, let's see. So far we have figures that can hold all of their accessories, uh, but this will not fit in the cavity of that backpack. So this may be the first one that has an accessory, the extra visor, uh, that doesn't seem to fit anywhere. And if I'm wrong about that, I will, uh, I will correct it. But at any rate, we've got a backpack, we've got an assault rifle, and we've got a fully loaded out figure. Uh, which one do I prefer? Uh, the one with the slot or the one with the red visor? I think I like the red visor more. It's just uh, one more spot of red on this figure, and the red accents uh, really add something. So let's... Uh, just pop that out. That went on very easily. So there, you, there's a bad guy, and he looks like a bad guy, doesn't he? Uh, I think that is beautiful. That is lovely. Um, he's got a first aid kit there with paint on it. So he's got paint on his uh, accessories. That's something that is rare. It's nice to see. Uh, and again, the uh, the patch on the arm and uh, just looks fantastic. One issue though, this does have an accessory that uh, doesn't seem to fit anywhere if he's not using it. So he has one accessory that he can't hold. Uh, you gotta pick one or the other. Um, if I'm wrong about that, uh, I, I, will, I will correct that mistake, but at least for the time being, it looks like he has an extra accessory that he can't hold. Otherwise, it's a really good looking uh, troop builder. It's a very good looking enemy soldier. And uh, yeah, looks like a bad guy. And he's ready to battle against your Delta 17 infantry troopers. Let's look at another woman action figure, an evil villain this time. It's Death Sparrow, the Retrograd leader. So I think this is a second enemy faction, and it's a really good looking action figure from what we can see so far. Some good artwork on the front, and uh, let's open it up and see if we like it. Oh, I didn't look at the card back. Uh, she is from Russia, of course, a Cold War enemy. Fortunately, Russia has 
has not given the world any trouble since the Cold War. They've been perfect angels, but this Cold War enemy is an enemy of Delta 17, so let's check her out. Almost done cutting these off of the cards. I feel I feel like uh, I'm, I'm vandalizing these things. These card backs really will hold up well for display as long as you're not taking sharp objects to them like I am. Uh, but um, trying to cut them as cleanly as I can with a dull knife. I did not know the knife was this dull before I started, uh, so I'll sharpen it before I use it next time. So here we go. Action figure is free. We have the artwork on the card here. It looks very good. And uh, back of the card, let's set the card there, and let's uh, free the action figure and see how we're looking. There we go, and here is the figure itself. Um, I've noticed on some of these, the the when I take them out, the arms are um, are twisted out like that. But there we go, straighten them out. Looks good. Okay, all right. She, now now she's got her arms pointed in a, a human direction now. Um, so the sculpting on this looks good. Um, uh, check out the like the texture on the back of the hair. That's that's pretty cool. And this is another action figure that starts with a black uniform, and uh, that that really works for me. I like black uniforms. You can do almost anything with them. You start with black, and then you put some equipment on there. And oh, check this out. Check out the the patch on the arm. That looks great. Uh, you put some equipment on there, you put some other colors on there, and you almost can't go wrong. There is a good number of paint applications on here. Yes, it's a basic black figure, but there's also brown and yellow and red. It, it looks good. Back to the good guys with Delta 17. This one has kind of become a fan favorite uh, online. I've noticed uh, people kind of talking about it and showing this one off, and it does look really good at a glance. So let's look at a rooster. Um, this is not Goose's son. This is a different rooster. No relation. Here it goes. We are almost done looking at all of these. We are almost done cutting plastic off of cards. Uh, these card backs are, are really nice. They, um, they hold up really well. Uh, you should not have any problem with them for display. So um, there is... Our card back. Oh, I didn't look at the back. Uh, this guy is from uh, New York. I, I don't know that. I, I can barely speak English, and that's too many syllables. But anyway, he's from New York, probably a Giants fan. Nicknamed Rooster because of his iconic haircut. So he does have, uh, have a mohawk, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they did that in plastic form. This is a guy... Oh, we have some tape. Let's cut the tape. This is a guy that um, has like the camouflage paint uh, on his face like G.I. Joe's Hit and Run. So the, the comparison will immediately be with, with Hit and Run. But uh, let's see if he compares favorably with Hit and Run. Here is our figure. There we go. And uh, let's let's just check those joints. Good, solid, good, solid, solid joints. We're good. We're good. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's really good. This is how it should be. Uh, this, these joints are. Uh, a, they they have a good tension on them. They are uh, tight but not frozen. They are buttery smooth. Uh, the figure itself. He's got that camouflage paint all over his head. He's got the black mohawk that looks really cool. Uh, he's got, uh, because, you know, because his head is green, um, he's got white uh, eyes. He's, he's got white paint applications on his eyes. Uh, so that's something that you, you can't skimp on. You can't skip on the, the eye paint for a figure that is green. So uh, we've got... A camouflage uniform. More camouflage with this line. I, I'm a fan of camouflage in general. It is somewhat reminiscent of Hit and Run. Uh, they would, I think, look pretty good together. You could put this guy in a squad with Hit and Run, and I think they would fit well. Look at these knee pads. These are the knee pads that go over 
the upper leg. They kind of stick out a bit. That's my favorite kind of knee pad. Uh, that, that That's a proper knee pad there. Uh, so here is Rooster, and let's take a look at Rooster's accessories. I'm assuming like his buddies, he stands up really well. Even Yeah, even without a figure stand, stands with no problem. Uh, so let's see what he's got. He's got... He's got a weapon. It's got this assault weapon. Looks really good. I've got a foregrip there, magazine, scope, very sharp. He's got this piece. This, I believe, goes with his backpack. So let's let's get the backpack out so we can look at it. Now we've got some, we've got two antennae here. Um, we've got two of the gooseneck uh, communications backpack antennae, uh, one, and come on oops there we go one and two very important to not lose those they are very small and delicate um, they are flexible they should not they should not break they flex rather than break that's good we've got a backpack and this is a communications backpack it makes sense he is the comms slash recon specialist it's a two-piece backpack or maybe a three-piece no it's a three-piece backpack so uh, it's got this piece here with the pouches and it's got this rack and then it's got the radio and I'm not sure if the radio does the radio come off um yeah it does check that out so you can remove the radio and let's see we can place an antenna on top of the radio the way that it's intended to like so uh, and oh let's not forget Let's not forget the figure stand. In fact, let's uh, let's put the figure on the stand right now. Here we go. Love the figure stands. Very high quality and beautiful. There we go. Uh, now let's uh, let's sort out these accessories. So this is a hand piece, and it pegs on to the backpack like that. That is beautiful. That is so cool. So there's a bit of technology uh, for field communications. Um, so this that makes this a, what a one two three four five piece backpack. That's pretty impressive. I am not sure where the other antenna is to go, so we'll just set that aside for now. Uh, I do like figures to hold all of their accessories. Hey, check out the knife on his back, on his black flak jacket. That's that's nice. Everywhere you look on these figures, they're just really excellent details but let's put this on backpack goes on very solidly the backpacks really fit well on these figures and then the weapon which should fit snugly in the hand it does and there is our guy there is our guy all geared up there is rooster a good figure maybe one of the best figures in a line that has a lot of really good figures that is a very geared up looking military looking figure with lots of equipment and lots of weapons not sure what i am to do with this though i feel like Maybe there's somewhere on this figure that I'm supposed to put it, but I'm just not seeing it. But there is an extra antenna. And, of course, I prefer uh, figures to carry all of their accessories. I don't like to leave things in the box, in the packaging, or just on a shelf, or toss it into a bin somewhere where it can get lost. So, not sure what to do with this yet, but I'll figure it out. I'm recording this after the fact. This segment was recorded after the later segments in this video, because in the pile of action figures, I missed one i forgot jaguar enemy assassin so i'm going to record this now and cut it in where it belongs in the video on the card we have some cool artwork he's got a blade on his arm and he's got laser eyes he's got a cool symbol here his name is jaguar enemy assassin and on his write-up uh, yeah, everything is unknown. Age unknown, real name unknown, rank unknown, and birthplace unknown. You know what? Why don't assassins own up to their profession? Why are they ashamed of their work? You know, you've chosen the profession of assassin, so own it. You know, be proud of your work. Put your name on your work. Why not? This is the actual last figure that I'm cutting off the card, and by this point, this knife is so dull, it might as well be a butter knife, but we are going to do the best we can and try to get a nice even cut on this and get this plastic off. So we can look at 
Jaguar. Even though we don't know where this guy is from, and with his name, he's probably a Jaguars fan. Plastic is cut off. Let's remove it from the card. As cleanly as possible. I did nick it a bit there, but uh, got a good looking card. Let's set it there. And uh, let's see if this is one that is taped or if it is not. It looks like it is not taped, so we can... Uh, or is it taped? Oh, it is. It is. Can I peel this tape? Or do I need to cut the tape? I think I can peel it. Yeah, there we go. Is that all the tape? It is. Okay. And here we have this beautiful figure. We've got a predominantly gray figure, but with some black tiger stripe camouflage. And we've got some spots of red. He's got his laser eyes and a red belt buckle. Uh, and it looks like some kind of red device on his belt. Uh, this is really, it's impressive. It gives uh, Firefly vibes. You know, G.I. Joe's enemy, a Cobra, Firefly. Um, but, of course, updated, modernized. Looks like he's got uh, ammunition on his chest. He's got sidearms. He's got one on each leg. And he has knee pads. And it's the good kind of knee pad. My favorite kind of knee pad. Uh, excellent looking figure. Very basic. Basic gray. Uh, but as long as it's done well, then that's perfectly fine. Let's stand him up so we can look at his accessories. And oh, uh, one's already come loose. Uh, he's got these um, bladed batons. Looks like he holds them underhanded, as it's shown in the artwork. And it, he has two of them. So two of those. He has a long rifle. Looks like a sniper rifle. Not as huge as the other sniper rifle that we've seen. Looks like there's a clip there, so I'm assuming there is a bipod. And there is right there. So let's go ahead and put the bipod on. Again, because I don't want to lose this, it would be very inconvenient to open this up and then immediately lose the tiny bipod. So there is that. And he has an assault weapon, a very strange looking assault weapon. And I see, I see some holes in the side, so this must peg onto something. Let's see if we can find out what it pegs onto. And there is a backpack. And there are some, yeah, there are some pegs on the backpack for the submachine gun. You can peg the submachine gun to the backpack, it looks like. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. And I see some teeth on each side of the backpack for holding the bladed weapons which means we have another figure that can hold all of his accessories at all times. Now that is not wanting to peg on very solidly, and that's the first time we've had that problem with an accessory not pegging on as firmly as it should. Now these are tiny pegs, and I don't want to risk breaking them. Rather than risk breaking them, I am just going to um, I'll try. It looks like it should go on this direction, but if it's not going to fit on, yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to give up on that before I break the backpack. I don't want to do that. Um, as far as the sheaths for the blades, those seem to work. Yeah, that's those are working fine. Yeah, and they friction in pretty well. So that's all well and good, but I was not able to get the submachine gun to peg on. The sniper rifle has holes too, so let's see if the sniper rifle will peg onto the backpack. Uh, let's move these just to make it easier for us. Oh, let's not forget the figure stand. Let's do that. We know the figure stands work, so let's do that. And stand him up proudly onto the backpack, focusing. That actually fits. The sniper rifle fits. So if he has the sniper rifle on the backpack and he has this in the hand, then he can still hold all of his accessories at once. The downside is that 
he has to have the submachine gun in hand. The submachine gun, at least on my example, does not fit on the backpack. It should. It's supposed to. But I've tried it all the ways that I can think of. And it is... It's, it's, not, it's not staying on. Um, I'm not sure if the pegs are too large or if the holes in the submachine gun are too small, but um, it's, it's just not staying on. Let's give Jaguar his accessories. Let's put his backpack on, and I'll go ahead and put the sniper rifle on the backpack because we know that fits. We know that'll stay on. Um, be cautious about these pegs on the backpack. We know from G.I. Joe accessories that pegs like that have a tendency to snap off and you are putting pressure on those to put the accessories on. Uh, so be cautious. And he has a submachine gun, a submachine gun with a closed loop around the grip. So this is not the uniform grip that we've had on other accessories. We are going to have to press that in the hand which may not be as easy but let's see if we can get it at least there we go all right can get the weapon in his hand oops and the sniper rifle has come loose i'd like to get one firearm in the hand one blade in the hand and the other is stowed on the backpack and if i can do that i will be satisfied so he's got to grip this underhanded. Uh, again, this is not a standard grip like on the other uh, the other weapons. So this will have to press in the figure's hand. Fortunately, we've got flexible hands, and yes, the the sniper rifle did did pop off again. I guess I can go the other way too, right? Because that's how it's shown in the artwork. You know what, I'm going to stop trying that because this tip right here is really sharp and it hurts. So I'm going to do it this way because I can do it this way without jabbing myself. There, one blade in hand, one submachine gun in hand. With all the moving around, I knocked him off of the figure stand. Backpack is still on. Um, other blade in the backpack and sniper rifle. On the backpack and then we have a geared up assassin with all of his stuff and he can hold all of his stuff I am glad that the last figure that I'm looking at it may not be the last figure you see in this video but the last figure I'm looking at is one that holds all of his accessories every single one of them he can hold at all times with the exception that I was not able to put the submachine gun on the backpack, so if he is using the sniper rifle, the submachine gun will have to go somewhere else. Uh, but a good-looking figure, Jaguar Enemy Assassin. Last one, and it is the Okami Enemy Robot Ninjas. I saved the Robot Ninjas for last because the idea of Robot Ninjas is amusing to me. So let's check out the robot ninjas this is another troop builder so you can decide i guess if you want enemy uh soldiers or enemy robot ninjas nice card back no place of birth for robots of course you could have a place of manufacture but not birth that's a really cool laser eyeball design there i like it so Let's do the deed again and cut this one off the card. Last one. At last, I am done defacing these cards. I feel terrible about uh, taking these off of these beautiful cards, but uh, it must be done. To do a proper review of these, it must be done. So let's, uh, let's strip this off and take a look. And see what a robot ninja looks like. You know, it it combines two things in G.I. Joe that, uh, you know, not, not everyone's a fan of. Not everybody likes robots and not everybody likes ninjas. If you don't like robots and ninjas, then why not combine the two so, you know, you only have one figure. Uh, if you want to avoid robots and ninjas, you only have to avoid one figure. But, hey, maybe it's a good figure. Let's check it out. Um, oh, take this off. Put the card back up here 
and uh, let's see any tape yes tape on this one uh, not really sure why some of them have tape and others don't uh, but it's it's fine it's not an inconvenience they could all have tape wouldn't bother me because we're gonna take them all out anyway so here we have our our robot ninja yeah this this is very interesting this is like an alternate universe cobra bat uh, the antenna on top that's a very nice touch he has a visor with like an extension like a scope or something on one of his eyes uh, that's very cool looking so we've got some robot like features we've got like armor plate on the chest and we've got black armor on the upper arms and lower arms. He has robot hands. Yeah, check it out. Robot-like hands. Looks very good. Uh, and, you know, it looks like he's got some circuitry there sticking out from under his glove. Uh, all very nice. And he has some ninja features. He has some throwing stars. He has a sigh on both legs. Uh, so we have features of both robot and ninjas. Let's check out the accessories. Okami, you stand right there like your friends did. Stand up solidly. Very nice. And let's check out the accessories. It looks like we have some kind of bladed weapons here. Bladed weapons. And we have two of them. Uh, and they have pegs, so I, I believe the hands will come off and we can put these on in place of the hands for some extra ninja weapons. Uh, we have an assault weapon, same deal. Peg with... Uh, oh, and there's another peg on the side, so I assume that means it will fit on the backpack. Very nice. Uh, that's, that's another tradition, kind of like the Cobra Bat, with having the extra pieces go on the backpack. Uh, so that, uh, that's good. We have two swords, two ninja swords. And I am curious if these are the same swords that came with the enemy leader. I will compare them. I will compare and contrast because they could be the same swords. If you're going to reuse parts if, or reuse accessories, that would be the way to do it. If you got two swords that are going to be almost identical anyway... Why not just make them identical? I, I really don't have a problem with that, um, especially if doing an accessory that way will save you money so you can do other cool things on your action figures. There's your backpack. Um, does this come off? It looks like there's a peg there. Um, yeah. So that's a two-piece backpack. Very nice. And let's not forget the figure stand. And let's put... Okami on his figure stand. Uh, he deserves a figure stand like his buddies. Uh, that color scheme, again, black and red, probably my favorite color combination. Uh, adding gray to it adds some uh, subtle contrast. So excellent colors, excellent detail. He does kind of look like a robot and a ninja. Uh, so let's look at these accessories. Um, I want to see if the hand comes off because it looks like it's supposed to. Yes, the hand comes off. There is a peg. On that peg, we should be able to place this submachine gun, for instance. So after he shoots that, uh, shoots all of his ammunition, he can pull that off, and then he can put on a blade for a stabby weapon. Stabby, stabby. And since there are two blades, I assume that means, uh, yes, the other one comes off, and then now he's, he's Razor Fist. But like Razor Fist from the comic book, not uh, the movie. He's got two razors. Four fists. Now that's very cool. I'm going to put the hands back on because I'd like to see how all of this fits with the backpack because it looks like the backpack will hold all or most of these accessories. How does this work? It looks like these swords, first of all, let's put the sword in his hand. Make sure the swords fit in the hands. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, there we go. Yeah, swords fit in hands very well, very nice. Um, now let's fit it in the backpack. It looks like the tall swords go here. Okay, the long swords don't go there, so I guess the long swords go this way. Oops. The long swords go this way, yeah. And 
Uh, you can have the one on each side. There we go. Very nice. Oh yeah, those those friction in pretty well. Those are not going to fall out. And what's next? That means the short swords should go in here, right? Sword. Sword. Uh, let's get it straight. Get it straight. There we go. Sword. Those friction in as well. And then there's a peg for the submachine gun to fit on like, uh, let's see, like this. Submachine gun fits on like so. And there are two additional pegs here. I assume those are for the hands. I think if you if you put the submachine gun on upside down, you may be able to fit the hands on there as well, which means he should be able to hold all of his accessories. Let me see if I can get this on. It's a little tricky to line up, but I think it'll be worth it because with that on, I think both the hands will also fit on. That means he can use any combination of these accessories and the rest will fit on the backpack with no problem. Nothing gets left behind. So let's pop that on. There, now he's wearing a backpack with all of his accessories on. Of course, you wouldn't normally do it this way. You would at least have something on the arms. So we'll put the hands back on. But if you wanted to, everything could fit on the backpack. Uh, and that is great. That's what I want to see. That's what uh, I wanted to see on the original Cobra Bat. Uh, that's what I want to see on any of these action figures that have removable hands and uh, interchanging parts. I want the figure to be able to hold everything, and this one does. So he looks good. He's functional. Uh, he has lots of accessories. And uh, this is a great way to finish looking at this line with a really good robot ninja figure. Just confirming those swords do appear to be the same as on the Shadow Dragon, and I think that's smart. That's a good use of accessories for two different action figures. There is the entire Delta 17 line as it stands right now. I'll just pan across so you can see all of them. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I love it, but I was expecting to because, like I said, I got a preview of them. And once again, they sent these to me. I did not purchase them. Uh, so you can consider that in forming your opinion. Um, they are very solid action figures. The articulation is really good. The joints are tight but smooth. They're not frozen. They're easy to move. Uh, the paint applications are on point. Uh, there's a lot of extra paint applications that you would not have gotten on an 80s G.I. Joe figure. So this is modern technology applied to an action figure style that uh, is very old and that we're very familiar with. Uh, the artwork on the cards is absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's not a lot negative to say about this line, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's a really solid line, and this is an excellent first wave. Downsides? There are not a lot of downsides. Uh, I guess my biggest problem would be the figures that have accessories that they can't hold. Uh, that's only two figures in this entire run that have any accessories that they can't hold. So that is a minor issue, and really just one of my pet peeves. You may not have a problem with that at all. I guess if I could say anything to the Delta 17 team, I would say... Uh, be careful about the quality control. Uh, very minor issues here. We had a head that was a little loose. We had some paint applications that were a little bit awry. Minor issues, but minor issues can add up to major issues, especially with a line that a lot of people will consider to be a premium line. I can't even fathom how difficult it must be to produce action figures like this and of this quality a lot of work went into this. I'm very impressed. Like I said, this is not a Kickstarter. These are action figures that will be for sale uh, either as you see this go up or shortly after. Make sure to check out their website for details on that. If you're a fan of O-Ring style action figures, well, here you go. They turned out exactly the way I thought they would. Thank you to Delta17 for sending them to me, and thank you for watching. Happy New Year, and I will see you next time.